24 cycles. Hi. Today I'm going a little bit off track in that I'm not talking specifically about car stereo, but I'm still talking about audio and in particular equalization. You may have already seen the video that I did on setting up the parametric equalization on Alpine's CDE 123R, which is pretty typical of the kind of equalizer that's built into head units these days. I recently bought a new LCD television for the kitchen, and like several that I've had and heard, it sounded pretty awful, even though the picture's pretty good. Now, why is that? Well, obviously, one of the bigger problems with LCD TVs is also one of the big benefits, and that's the fact that they're very thin. The cabinets are small, tiny compared to the kind of cabinet that were on a, a traditional CRT, the big boxes. Now, that's a problem when you have speakers. The speakers fitted are not going to be great quality, but in the old style television, at least they had some space to work in and you'd get a certain amount of warmth. Never sounded necessarily very good, but at least you had a little bit of bass. These days, you get very little in the way of quality. Now, when I first switched this on, it came on in the default settings and it did sound awful. However, like a lot of them, the audio chip has built-in equalization. It's not as comprehensive as the one built on the Alpine head unit. It's not parametric EQ, it's more like a graphic equalizer. However, there is some tweaks you can make. I thought it was worth going through it because I wonder how many people actually know how to set the equalizers on these things. And I hate to think how many people are listening to it on the default factory settings. Okay, here we have a 22 inch Toshiba LCD TV. Fairly typical of the kind of TV that you'll have nowadays, and perhaps fairly typical of the kind of sound quality that you get from them. If you go to the menu items, you can select a number of setups, such as picture, sound. If we go to sound, then there is a section on equalizer. So if we go into that, so in the user settings for the equaliser, you can set the level of adjustment at various frequency points. So as you can see, you've got five settings on the equaliser under user, which allows you to customise the level at each frequency point. Now to anyone who understands audio, it's pretty obvious that the bass frequencies are down below 100 hertz and the treble frequencies are above 5 or above 10k. But for anyone who's not particularly into audio, it doesn't mean anything. A bass control is bass, a treble control is treble. What's 500 hertz? What's 120 hertz? What's 5000 hertz? It isn't necessarily obvious, so I thought it's worth even explaining that. If we look on here, you can select one of five frequency points. If we start at the top, which is actually, confusingly, the bottom of the frequency range, it says 120 hertz. Now this is the upper bass. It's not really low bass. There wouldn't be much point in putting a low bass EQ setting on a TV of this size um, because the speaker is too small to produce it. 120 hertz, even then, is at best going to give you a little bit of warmth on vocals but it does help. Notice how I've got this set to 10, that's plus 10 dB at 120 Hz. Don't be fooled, it doesn't give you any bass on this TV. It simply gives you a little bit of warmth on the vocal or spoken word. Now if we look at 500 Hz, 500 Hz is low mid-range and ordinarily you would say that that would give some warmth in the voice or vocal area. But notice how I've got it down to minus six. It just simply doesn't work on this TV, probably because of the width or bandwidth. In other words, the width, the number of frequencies or the spread of frequencies that are being increased or reduced at a certain frequency point is probably quite wide. Chances are, and I haven't checked it yet on here, but the chances are it's affecting it at 1K, which is making it sound even boxier than it already is. So reducing it at 500 Hz has a good effect. 
Notice that at 1.5k I've increased it by 5 dB. It seems to bring a little bit of life to vocals, voices, um, and that certainly helps with a bit of clarity. Also notice that at 5k and then at 10k, which are the two treble frequencies, if you like, the higher frequency range, I've maxed it out. They're both at plus 12. Part of the reason is it's a, it sounds dull if you don't do that, not least because the speakers are not firing at you. On this TV, they seem to be firing down against the table. And of course, that's often a problem with uh, speaker positioning on LCD TVs. They do themselves no favours whatsoever. They're either firing out towards the back, the side, or down below. Now, one of the things that makes this different from the equaliser that I went through when I did the review of the Alpine CDE123R is that you don't control width or, um, or centre frequency. This is very much like a graphic equaliser where the frequency points are preset 120 hertz, 500, 1.5k and so on. All you can affect is the level down or up. That's all you can do. And the bandwidth, in other words, the, the frequency spread that is affected when you're doing that, is not just at, obviously, it's not just at 1.5 kilohertz. It's a spread of frequencies with that at the center point of them. And it's probably quite a big spread of frequencies. If you're interested to see the effect, go and look at the um, piece that I did on setting the parametric EQ on the Alpine, because the effect would be the same here. And the chances are it's quite a broad uh, frequency spread that it affects. And that's why you really need to listen to what it's doing. The theory of saying, OK, it should sound quite nice if you increase it at 500 hertz. No, it doesn't. It just sounds boxy. Probably because of the effect that it's having, as I say, on frequencies higher up at around 1K. Now, a lot of LCD TVs will have this kind of equaliser built on the audio chip. And it's well worth experimenting with it. Don't stick to the factory presets. They will invariably sound poor, sometimes unbelievably poor. Technology has improved, but in some ways you know we've gone backwards. In the audio sense, and when it comes to these TVs, I cannot believe how bad some of them sound. So this has been quite a quick little introduction to the kind of equalization built into many of the TVs. It's well worth getting inside the menu, having a tweak, and just trying to improve the best you can what the factory gives you, because quite often the factory settings will be very poor. Do go along and have a look at my uh, parametric EQ instructional video that I did on the Alpine CDE123R. That shows you the kind of curves that you're getting on an RTA and explains it a little bit more. This is much simpler on this TV, but the process is exactly the same. You just have fewer settings to play with. It's well worth playing with, have a go, and don't just listen to the factory presets.